morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Ivy League Football Preseason Media Day. My name is Matt Panto, Associate Executive Director for Communications at the Ivy League office, and we thank you very much for being here with us. We appreciate your attendance this morning and look forward to celebrating the start of the 2021 Ivy League football season. A few notes before we get underway. The Ivy League will once again have a significant broadcast presence this season as part of its long-term league-wide agreement with ESPN. The league will showcase six games featuring all eight teams on ESPN linear networks. The remainder of all home games for Ivy League events will be available on ESPN+. The league will also be featured on a number of regional sports networks throughout the season, including Nesson, SNY, and NBC Sports Philadelphia. The Ivy League once again celebrated its Ivies in the NFL last season with 25 alumni earning NFL roster spots and a significant number more in NFL front offices. The season was capped with Harvard's Cameron Brait and Penn's Justin Watson winning the Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It was the third straight season and Ivy lifted the Lombardi Trophy. The entirety of today's program will be recorded and published on the league's YouTube channel later today. If you would like a recording sent to you directly, please email JJ Klein, the league office's football communications contact at JJ at Ivy league.com. That email is JJ at Ivy league.com for a recording of today's program. And a note to the media members present on today's call. Once we are joined by the coaches and student athletes, there will be an opportunity at the conclusion of each team session for media to ask questions to the coaches and student athletes from each team. To ask a question, please use the raise hand function located at the bottom of your screen. And we'll share many reminders about this as the call proceeds and go on, but you will use the raise hand option located at the bottom of your screen. So with all of that at this time, I'd like to introduce Ivy League Executive Director Robin Harris to the program to share a welcome to today. On July 1st, Robin began her 13th year as the league's executive director. During her tenure, she has led the league to new heights across a number of different areas and continues to be an influential and respected voice throughout college athletics, a trait most recently shown by her appointment to the NCAA's Constitution Committee. Robin, thanks so much for joining us and giving us a few minutes this morning. Really appreciate it. The program is yours. Thank you, Matt, and good morning and welcome to Ivy League Football Media Day. I am incredibly excited for the unofficial start to the 2021 Ivy League football season. And I wanna provide a special welcome to the media members joining us today. Thank you for your interest and professionalism in telling the story of our Ivy League athletes. We enter this preseason with renewed anticipation and excitement following the unprecedented journey that we have all been through over the last 18 months. I am incredibly proud of the way our coaches and student athletes handled the adversity of the past year. While COVID-19 is still very much part of our daily lives, we believe in the campus policies that each Ivy League institution has put in place for a safe and successful return to competition. In particular, I take great comfort in knowing that our student athletes and coaches will be fully vaccinated other than very limited medical or religious exceptions. This then allows us to plan for a regular football season. Our league is ready. We are ready to compete. We are ready to return to our holistic, unrivaled experience. One that consistently includes national athletic success. We are ready to watch our student athletes thrive in competition and in the classroom. I have no doubt our coaches and student athletes are ready to take the field this year and to add to the storied tradition and modern success of Ivy League football. During a time where so much of college athletics is in transition and navigating uncertainty, I invite you to tune into ESPN each weekend and enjoy a conference rooted in collegiality, stability, and principles. Thank you to everyone 
for the support of Ivy League football. And I hope you enjoy today's program and the 2021 Ivy League football season. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. Greatly appreciated. We will transition for a brief second here. At this time, we do welcome the Dartmouth Big Green to the call. Joining us today, head coach Buddy Tevens, along with linebacker Tanner Cross and tight end Robbie Magnus. Coach, it is great to see you. Looking forward to this 2021 season. We'll start with some opening comments from you and get into some questions there. All right. Well, Matt, I appreciate it. And certainly Robin Harris just kind of getting this thing all up and moving. Uh, as the previous coaches have mentioned, just tremendous enthusiasm. You know, the energy and uh, not doing something that you've done for so long as a player or as a coach, it's just, uh, hey, let's get this up and running. Uh, the big question for me is, hey, culture. Uh, guys that haven't seen each other for a couple of years, uh, two classes that really don't know, two older classes. Uh, we were fairly fortunate here at Dartmouth. We did have a fall session. We had a spring session as well. Our strength coach, Spencer Brown, has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and our coaches have done a nice job from a distance with Zoom uh, calls, but it's just not the same as being here together. Uh, the most fun thing for me was seeing guys in spring practice that had not seen each other for a long period of time and just the, the jubilation and the enthusiasm, the excitement. Uh, we forgot a lot of things and lined up offside or uh, you know, missed a block or so that, that type of thing. But just to see the guys, how excited they were to get back together. Um, certainly a challenge is uh, numbers. Uh, everyone has alluded to it. Everybody has a bloated uh, uh, roster at this point. And from a, com a competition standpoint, uh, with us, it's always been about the team, best guy plays, uh, being supportive of, of each other. You know, you have only have so many uh, balls to distribute uh, or opportunities to, to step on the field. Uh, so there's a challenge there, and this is an adventure for me. I've been doing this a while and never anything quite like this. But the attitude of our players has been phenomenal, and our coach is tremendously supportive. Uh, we're anxious and ready to go and open up this Thursday. You, you, you talked about how uh, this is on chartered borders here. Does preseason camp change at all? Is there anything that you do differently that you stick to the, to the path that's got you here to so much success in Hanover? What do you uh, look at as you start to script out preseason camp? No, we'll do uh, very, very similar. That's what we know and that's what we've experienced. Uh, the big thing is repetition for players. You know, the safety aspect that uh, some people have asked, were well, you going to change because you haven't tackled in a while? Nope, we'll do the same type of thing and uh, limit the subconcussive hits and so forth. But it's, as I tell our players, this, it's like riding a bike. Uh, guys that have gone through an injury and have missed a season, they come back and they're fine and they're good to go. Uh, you knock the rust off a little bit and you're right back at it. Uh, the thing I think is just high, high energy. And we saw that in the spring and we did not have the whole team back uh, this will be the first time to get them all together. So in some sense, I think we're going to have to hold the reins back a little bit as opposed to, hey, uh, you know, giddy up type of deal. But uh, the, the energy enthusiasm, I think, is going to carry us through. You brought two guys here, and Tanner and Robbie, that I know you have big goals and ideas for for this upcoming year. Talk a little bit about them and what makes them so special on and off the field. So there, Coach. Yeah, I thought that was geared towards my players. No, nope, no, nope, I apologize. Just talk a little bit about those guys, and uh, then we'll get their thoughts as well. I apologize. It's, uh, well, uh, Robbie Mangus uh, has done a wonderful job at the tight end position, kind of a hybrid. Yeah, we move him in the backfield. Uh, we put him out wide. He catches the ball very, very well, uh, and very, very solid blocker. Hard worker, so physically he's as good, as well prepared as he's ever been with us. Uh, Tanner Cross, a linebacker position, a regular player, special teams, does everything that we ask of him. A very, very cerebral individual as well. He'll be a great teacher for some of our young players. You know, in the combination, again, unselfish guys who love to play, have experience, speed, size, physicality, uh, and knowledge. So we expect great leadership out of these guys, as we do from the rest of our, our seniors and our super seniors, as uh, David had alluded to. Tanner, we'll start with you on that. I, I wonder, you, you, the anticipation has got to be coming through uh, as you start to look at this season. Individually, talk about your goals uh, for, for your squad, but also uh, maybe uh, take us into some of those leadership qualities and how some of the ways that your uh, typical leadership will change or stay the same heading into this year. Yeah, thanks for being here with us today, Matthew. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, for individual goals, I think it's just being the best that I can be. You know, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, you know, the attitude of it's really changed from, you know, it's something I have to do to something I get to do uh, after being taken away uh, with COVID. So 
really excited to be here and just be the best that I can be. And uh, as for leadership, it's just about bringing those young guys that, you know, haven't experienced this before and have never been through it, uh, you know, bringing them, bringing them along with me and the rest of the team. Uh, you know, it's as far as we all go, that's, that's as far as we go. So making sure we all go together uh, and just be there, be there for them and help them grow and kind of continue the tradition and culture that Dartmouth has instilled in me through my three years or four years here. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, reminder to the media, if you have a question, please take advantage of the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Robbie, I'll ask you the same thing for the offensive side of the ball. And then you hear Coach Stevens talk about uh, the leadership. It feels like that leadership is going to be so much even more important this year. Talk about that offensive side of the ball and then individually your goals and your leadership qualities that will add to this team. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, a challenge, you know, coming in with now two classes that, you know, aren't familiar with playing Ivy League football and just getting them used to our Dartmouth culture, bringing them up to speed on, you know, how we do things around here, you know, as well as the playbook, but also just getting to know who they are off the field and kind of bonding and linking there. I think that's a really important part of, you know, team chemistry um, so offensively, we've definitely, you know, lost some, some really great players for us, but I, I think the opportunities we've had in the fall and the spring with, uh, being able to practice and see some of these new young guys, as well as just guys that maybe didn't have an opportunity in 2019, you know, to see their talent has been, uh, really special for us. And I, I think that's, that's got us really excited going into this fall camp. Um, from an individual level, pretty similar to what Tanner uh, spoke about, just trying to improve, in, uh, you know, day by day, just focusing on, you know, it, just improving, you know, 1% every day, just, just uh, building our way towards uh, week one. All three of you have now talked about culture. Uh, Tanner, I wonder if you wouldn't mind diving into that culture a little bit. Coach Stevens outlined it, Robbie mentioned it, you mentioned it as well. What goes into that culture at Dartmouth? Yeah, so I think a lot of that has to kind of do with our location, just out in the middle of the woods. Uh, there's not much else to do other than, you know, be with each other, hang out with each other, and just, you know, learn learn who you are as a person. Uh, Robbie mentioned that, like, uh, you know, looking back on it now, uh, four years past after making the decision to come to Dartmouth, just seeing the person that I've grown into and the things that I like that I had never been exposed to before, uh, I think that's, like, what our culture is. You come in here... Uh, a certain person and then you grow with your friends with your teammates into this whole new person and by the end of your four years once you're graduating you're you look back on it you're like wow like this self-growth is amazing and I think a lot of that is just being here secluded in the woods and you know being like really forced to grow with each other and that uh, through some tough times and I, th I think it's great for us here Thank you for that. Uh, we do have one question from the media right now uh, Jimmy Golan, uh, if you wouldn't mind, we will unmute you. And then any questions that you have for the Big Green, please feel free to fire away. Jimmy. You guys hear me okay? Yep, all set. Thank you. Coach, uh, you, uh, everyone's been through a lot already, but the pandemic's still going on. There's a Delta variant spreading. And I'm just wondering what you're still going to need to do and kind of what precautions you have uh, you're going to put in to keep everyone safe uh, this season as well. Yeah, Jimmy, uh, I love the trophy. A great look, wrong sport. But yeah, the uh, the variant right here, it's a concern. Uh, New Hampshire ranks among the, the lowest in terms of infectious rate at Dartmouth, who are about 90 plus percent uh, on campus. Uh, but the masking uh, protocol will be in place indoors, uh, facilitate just a, air filters and so forth, things that we have not had. But we'll do everything that we possibly can, some outdoor meetings. Uh, but the attitude right now, where the guys, by and large, they're all vaccinated. Uh, the comfort level is a little bit greater and we've seen it through the course of the summer, a little bit more relaxed, but still heightened awareness. Uh, it's always a threat. We just got to protect each other. And uh, that's kind of the mindset we have moving forward. Thanks. Coach. Jimmy, thank you, coach. Thank you. Thank, thanks, uh, Jimmy. Next question from Alex Despoli. Alex, we will unmute you. And then a question for the Big Green. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Coach Stevens, uh, how much tougher do you think it is for those younger players to stand out 
this year in particularly uh, to earn a role given the missed time in the field the last year and a half and given the you know extra older players on all these teams is it going to take something special for those guys that are in their first or second year to be able to earn playing time uh, versus a normal year a great question uh, it's interesting the freshmen the true freshmen from last year are actually probably ahead of the curve uh, we had them on in the fall we had them on in the spring and with reduced numbers, they had far more repetitions than they historically would ever have had. Uh, the other point with, uh, we had uh, seniors, fifth year seniors and ju uh, juniors working with those guys. So they're imparting knowledge, uh, just systemically what we do, terminology. And again, the, the focus and Tanner alluded to it, just the proximity. We see these guys with great regularity up campus in classrooms in the library, in the dining hall. And I think that's really helped the freshman class develop far more than they would have had it been a normal experience. Uh, the incoming freshmen, this is going to be a hey, it's just the norm. Uh, they're coming in. They don't really know. The difference is I don't completely know what all these guys look like. We've Zoomed them. And uh, the guy that says he's 6'5", 280, yeah, he could be 5'11", and just wearing a big coat. Uh, so we'll kind of figure that out as we go. But the, uh, the teaching that went on from the seniors to the juniors to the younger guys has helped not only the young guys, but also the seniors and the, and the juniors. So I think in that regard, cohesiveness, which has been referenced by a number of the, the previous players, that's been enhanced. And the numbers, uh, the limitation just made those guys grow a little bit closer. Coach, uh, some things that you look at going into preseason camp, um, not necessarily on the, on the one side of the ball or the other or special teams, but more so those first couple of days of camp, what do you want to see from your guys to know that you're headed in the right direction here? Well, the big uh, the thing is effort and then uh, seeking knowledge. A lot of the, the, the young guys in particular, terminology and adjustments <clears throat> there will be, will be very, very important. But, you know, doing it and knowing what to do and when to do is, is absolutely critical with us. So assignments, uh, the nice thing is we have almost, it's a, it's a pro environment up here. We don't start classes for an extended period. So the, we have the guys around uh, the meetings. They're so focused right uh, then we'll be uh, developing as a football program. Uh, on both sides, we've graduated. Uh, Robbie mentioned that, some, some very good players. We have very good players that haven't been on the field a whole bunch. So uh, we think we have depth, we have competition, and we have cohesiveness, uh, which is huge for us up here in, in Hanover. Robbie, I wonder if you might want to say a few words about Tanner, type of teammate that he is, type of player that he is. Uh, you guys have uh, so much fun talking about each other. I wonder if you had a, a few comments about Tanner. Yeah, absolutely. Tanner's, you know, a guy that's going to get after it when he's on the field. You know, it's a, a pain in my butt to have to block him every day in practice. Um, but at, at the end of the day, he's somebody that's going to get a, all of us, uh, you know, both on defense and on offense better because he's a leader on defense. So he's going to make sure his guys are given, you know, best effort every day. But then offensively, you know, having to block him every day and the playmaker he is just makes us all around better. Um, and then off the field, you know, he's, he's, he's a leader for us. So, you know, just, you know, checking in with guys, making sure they're doing all right, but also, you know, assignment wise, he's mentioned it, you know, just meeting with guys and they have any questions he's there for them. So, you know, I think both on and off the field, he's shown really great leadership for us. Tanner, I wonder if you want to do the, do the same with Robbie there. Yeah, thanks for that, Robbie. Uh, you know, it's really interesting. If I had to pick a kind of exact counterpart to on the offensive side for me, uh, it'd probably be Robbie Mangus. Uh, he's a guy that gives 100%, 100% of the time. Uh, he's going to bring everybody along with him. He's never going to, you know, let his position group falter. He's always going to make sure everybody's all right. And, uh, you know, he's somebody that's just always going to be there for his teammates, his friends, and that's on and off the field. And I, I think it's just a testament to, you know, how he was raised and how he uh, kind of found himself within this program. Uh, so I think Robbie's a great guy and uh, looking forward to him having a great season this year. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, a reminder to the media, if you have any questions, please take advantage of the raise hand option at the bottom of your screen. While we wait on more questions, Coach, you start with Valpo on uh, September 18th. I wonder between now and then, I know it's a long journey through preseason camp, but when you when your hit, head hits the pillow on September 17th and you're getting ready for that game, how do you know that your team will be ready heading into week one? Well, I have great confidence in our players and the, the older leadership of, of the group. Very, very unselfish group. Uh, and these guys are great examples of it. They're not talking about themselves. They're talking about each other. Uh, and that's a huge thing with us. The players have put the time in. 
certainly there's more time and, and very important time to come up. Just uh, again, knock the rust off the pipes. But the attitude has, has been phenomenal. Uh, and uh, our guys, were obviously Valpo, a uh, playoff team last year, uh, very, very talented. Uh, be a big trip for us, but one that they, it's, that's we set our sights on. That's what we uh, prepare for. Tanner, Robbie, I'd, I'd actually pose the same question to you. Again, the anticipation of game one has got to be so high. How do you stay even keeled throughout preseason camp and then just start getting ready to, to hit that field and make it all come together on September 18th? Tanner, I'll start, I'll start with you if you don't mind. Yeah, I think it's uh, like Coach Steven said, it's it's really reliant on us older guys, you know, being a, um, a real staple in the program and, you know, providing the young guys and uh, somebody to lean on during this time because your first or second preseason camp is probably your toughest time ever as a collegiate athlete. You know, you're not used to it, not used to the rigorous hours, the rigorous physical labor it takes to, you know, go out there and practice every day. So just making sure that those guys kind of learn the way and we, you know, we do what we've done for uh, the past four years and, you know, just take preseason camp to get the best we can be, be comfortable with the playbook and, uh, you know, just be a cohesive team. And that starts in the locker room, uh, just hanging out. And that, that's one thing we're really glad to be able to get back going into preseason camp is the locker room com camaraderie. I mean, uh, you learn so much about each other and you build so much, uh, so much of a bond through that. And it, it's great to have that back. Bobby, I'll ask you the same question if you don't mind. I think in terms of practicing, you know, having the advantage of a, a fall practice and spring practice has given some of the young guys an opportunity to get a feel for what our practices will be like during fall camp. And um, I think it's just, you know, there's all kinds of excitement in the room and it's just, you know, being back in the locker room, like, like Tanner was saying, it's just um, something we're really looking forward to. And I think in terms of preparation for week one is, um, while we have, you know, fantastic leadership from our players, and I think that's where it, it starts, is we also have an awesome coaching staff that, you know, is just going to put us in the right place to make plays. Um, so there's just a lot of trust between players and, and then also with the coaching staff that I think it's just that trust is very crucial uh, to be ready for week one. We have no doubt that you'll be ready for week one. Uh, Coach Stevens. Tanner, Robbie, really appreciate a couple minutes this morning. Couldn't be more excited to watch you guys this season. Wishing you all the best and uh, looking forward to that 2021 season. Thanks so much for a few minutes this morning. Thanks for having us, Matt. And thanks to the yeah, press folks you, for joining. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.